This video is sponsored to you guys by VGC, where, I mean, the obvious is kind of obvious, and people always been calling out VGC, but, I mean, it doesn't matter. It's VGC, right? But anyways, so I've been kind of late to the party on several topics that I wanted to talk about. I mean, Pokemon is kind of dead right now, and I don't really have the initiative to make new Pokemon videos up until pretty much the new game gets released this year. But an interesting topic that I am going to be revisiting is VGC cheating, quote unquote. So our boy, we are back on Kphonics Twitter, and if you know who he is, his name looks familiar. I've been going over his tweets a long time ago in regards to Jenning and VGC, and yeah. So here is a stats or some stats of in-person events regarding the overall number of teams that have been registered in VGC competitions and also shows the number of teams that were legal and the teams that were illegal so as you can see wow there's a lot of illegal teams <laughs> now you might be wondering well that's not really new I mean you know what's going on or if you're the person who wants to get into VGC you'd be like well what's going on why is this happening well I'm going to say this pretty much if you want the the sum the summary of it it's basically people are just being sloppy when it comes to Jenning. Now, for a person like me, I don't care about Jenning. I'm all for it as long as it doesn't tarnish the integrity of in-person official Pokémon competitions. You know, if you're doing giveaways or you're just giving away Pokémon for whatever reason or you're just using for a Nuzlocke, be my guest. You know, I I personally don't care. And you shouldn't be judged by the way you play Pokemon. I mean, Pokemon is Pokemon at the end of the day. But when it comes to in-person events where there's cash money on the line, when there's nationals or world qualifiers, you know, at stake, then that issue kind of does get magnified a bit. Especially when you're, like, in the bubble, you're trying to make top, or you're trying to make the cut, and you face up against teams that are, like, a bit too good to be true. And, and if they are too good to be true, then they probably, you are correct. And obviously it says here, you know, when it comes to the sloppiness of gen teams in BGC, obviously the hide and wait, the home tracker, is a pretty much is the biggest thing. And I've always noticed that with a lot of Pokemon that I get from my uh, subscribers who, uh, <laughs> you know, trade Pokemon with me. And I think the biggest issue is the hide and wait is always going to be like the consistent issue and the home tracker oftentimes the home tracker for a Pokemon you know the issue there is that no two Pokemon will have the same home tracker ID number unless they were cloned so there's that B uh, raid RNGC so basically if you're getting shiny six IV Pokemon from raids you know obviously those Pokemon are not 100% legitimate I think everyone knows at that point in time Although I'm quite surprised there's still people getting Pokemon from those. Unless they're bringing up old Pokemon from there. But uh, yeah. It's still pretty much the same consistent issues when it comes to Gen Pokemon. Like perfect IVs. You know that's extremely hard to get in a Pokemon game. Especially when you're running Trick Room teams that have like zero IVs. Or you're using Foul Play Pokemon with zero attack IVs. I said zero IVs and speed in Trick Room right? Uh, that's 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 my correction. That was my bad. So it says here, Kurt also makes a good point. Uh, players have been less likely to post teams. There are more team pastes and censored rental codes lately. So if you guys don't know, you can also use VGC teams through rental codes. But of course, just because you use a rental code doesn't mean that team is legitimate. That team could be made from third-party sources. It could be made from very sketchy sources. The VGC metagame is getting stale, and an unknown moveset EV spread does allow for surprises. That makes sense, because Pokemon right now, like I said, mentioned earlier in this video, it is kind of dead. I mean, we are in the cycle of a generation where there's not going to be a lot of movement up until the new game gets released. Official metagames, just playing Pokemon in general right now is, is boring. I get that. You know, whatever. I suspect some players don't want free hack checks too. So if you guys never been to a VGC event, uh, once you submit a registered team, you, it does go through a their own legality checker. And oftentimes, 
those legality checkers are only going to see whether or not your Pokemon has illegal abilities, illegal IVs, illegal EVs, illegal movesets, you know, illegal Pokeballs and all that stuff. But it doesn't really check the the doesn't check the Pokemon more in depth. Where did the Pokemon come from? How did you come up with this Pokemon? Was this bred? Was this an event? Stuff like that. And it says here, uh, there was a I think there was a team with the Dracovish event. And it says here, the owner of the event, Dracovish, distributed at the EUIC, has shared a ton of hacked rental teams. Couldn't find the original Dracovish rental team, but his friend's recreation that he retreated was illegal. <laughs> it's funny to see players obtain their teams from trade bots. Again, at this point, people don't really care where their Pokemon come from. They just want to have the Pokemon ready for battle competitions. Now, there are people that I've always seen... I've seen them in my comment section. They don't like Janda Pokemon. They don't like Pokemon being created from third-party software or legitimate sources like trade bots or Discord bots or whatever. They're the 100% has to be naturally bred, capturable, obtainable Pokemon in the game itself. Now, here's the thing. I personally do not care how you get your Pokemon. As long as your Pokemon is not illegal, and what I mean by illegal is it has illegal abilities, illegal movesets, illegal IVs, EVs, etc. If you can get your Pokemon and it goes through Pika Hex and it has the green check and it has everything legal about it, that you can use it online, if the Pokemon can be used online, you're good, man. You're good in my eyes. Because ultimately, I'm a battler. I'm a competitive person. I don't play VGC, of course. I play 6v6 OU. I mean, what more do you want? If you're that person that always tells people, oh, you got to play this game a certain way, or you're a bad person, or you can't play Pokemon right, or you're you're disgusting, you're the scum of society, well, hold on, bro. You can't be, you can't be gate, gatekeeping a game that Pokemon themselves don't enforce. There is an actual clause in the... Pokemon VGC rule set that says that if you use illegitimate Pokemon, you could get disqualified. If you use these Pokemon, and if you get caught, you can get disqualified. If they're not enforcing the rule set, they're not enforcing the rules, why why are you so pressed about it? If the creators of the game don't really care, or they're doing like pat down security check, whatever, <laughs> when it comes to checking Pokemon, you shouldn't care unless there's like a a huge competition like VGC Worlds on the line. Of course, that's that's going to matter. It might matter. In the end, it doesn't really matter. I think when you if you're trying to win VGC, it comes down to you having the best battling skills and of course a little bit of luck cuz you know Pokémon at the end of the day is a game based on luck with all the RNG and statuses and all yada yada yada. And I just don't really see why it's an issue it's still an issue for a lot of people nowadays like Pokemon has been around for almost for over 20 years and genning and cheating has been around for a while now I mean it shouldn't be a surprise for anybody who even attempts to join VGC that's why I play Pokemon Showdown because first of all the competition is way 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 better than the Nintendo Switch or console on Pokemon games and you don't have to worry about cheating because it comes down to, like I said, skills and a little bit of sprinkle of luck here and there. Anyways, that's pretty much all I have to say. Like I mentioned in this video, it doesn't matter how you play the game or how you obtain your Pokemon. If you can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with me in battle, hey, I'm all for it. But if you're going to go to a VGC competition, you need to double-check your work. Because people like me, people like the developers and creators of Pika Hex, are... You know they can they will check the, the teams and they won't call you out I don't think they really care at the end of the day because I mean they're just happy they're getting traffic through their software or they're just happy that people are actually using their software <laughs> like me for example but you know they're just trying to make sure if you're gonna do it the right way if you're gonna gen the right way just make sure you check your work double check it triple check it if you're playing official VGC competitions and you see this here with illegal teams going around. Yeah, I don't know about this. I mean, you 
there's got to be a way to fix this. And if Pokemon doesn't enforce it, you know, there's no reason for you to gatekeep Pokemon fans from potentially joining VGC if they play Pokemon a certain way. But anyways, guys, let me know what you guys think. A uh, pretty interesting topic that I always talk about because people nowadays are still always like, oh, my God, Jenning is the devil. You know, it's the devil's lettuce or whatever. And it's like, yo, it's 2022. At this point, if you get any Pokemon from anyone, there's a good chance that it wasn't legitimate. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. See you guys on the next video. Peace.